Today we will discuss the case that befell two female teenagers named Janaina Cristina Brito Consizel, 16 years old at the time of the incident, while her friend Gabriela Alves Nunes, 13 years old at the time of the incident, in 2010. These two teenagers were friends and lived on the same street, in the city of Salvador, Brazil. They became friends because they had the same activities in that area, and both were known as good children who never did anything strange. Gabriela was known as a girl who diligently helped her grandparents, because at that time she lived with them. While Janaina, she was the favorite child of the family, where Janaina's father was a military policeman. These teenagers live in an area that is very vulnerable to CARTEL combinations. Their families always reminded them to be careful in making friends, and not to approach people involved in trafficking. Janaina was monitored very closely by her father, and she was not allowed to go out or walk alone outside of school hours. Janaina feels that she has no freedom. Likewise with Gabriella, she said that if her grandparents were too strict about what she could do. They are very curious about how beautiful the world is, and what things they don't know are out there. Janaina wanted to try out how to have a boyfriend, and she approached a guy named Alan. Alan is a bookie in the Manguino region. Janaina's family never knew about that relationship. Janaina will take class time at school to meet Alan somewhere. Janaina often comes home late. Finally, Janaina's father found out the cause. He discovered that Janaina often hung out at punk places with other young people. And because Janaina's family is a very religious family, they don't want their daughter to be involved in wrong associations. Her father also told her mother to take and pick up Janaina when she went to school. So, she won't have time to walk outside with the bad people. At school, Janaina make a plans together with Gabriella. They open the internet to find friends in cyberspace. Initially, they downloaded a chat application, and there they spent their free time. Janaina's parents thought it was still safe for their daughter. So, they weren't too worried. In November 2010, the two teenagers asked their parents for identity cards. Her parents thought it was normal. And they didn't ask or find out what the daughter's motive was for asking for an identity card. They went together, but Janaina and Gabriella didn't come home that day. Their family just realized that something was wrong with them. Janaina left a piece of paper on the table, saying there was no need to worry about it. On the application, Janaina deleted several SMS she had sent to several people. And it looks like Janaina is hiding something. Janaina's father immediately went to Gabriella's grandparents' house, because he knew that Janaina often went with Gabriella. Gabriella also left her grandparents' house on the same day. According to people near that area, they saw Janaina and Gabriella walking towards a region called Nova Divineya. According to Gabriella's family, she said goodbye to visit her cousin's house in the Nova Divineya region. Gabriella's cousin, who lives in the area, said that Gabriella did not contact her or tell her that she would be coming to her house that day. Janaina and Gabriella's families are increasingly worried about their whereabouts. On the other hand, Janaina and Gabriella apparently met someone named Risolvado Hora Costa. Riso is a member of ACARTEL in the area, and he has been imprisoned several times for theft, robbery, DRUG sales, and is also a DRUG dealer. The first night, Janaina left her parents' house, she stay with Riso, while Gabriella, she stay at the house of a woman who was also a member of the CARTEL. Janaina's father made a report about her daughter's disappearance to the police station, and there he demanded protection for the minor. They kept calling Janaina, but Janaina wouldn't pick up the phone. So, Janaina's family contacted Janaina's close friend and told them to talk to Janaina. There, Janaina said that she didn't want to talk to her family, because her father and mother always restricted what she did. She will look for happiness and freedom out there, because she believes that this world is not as cruel as they say. Gabriella, that same day, called her mother and said that she was in good condition. Janaina and Gabriella's families calmed down a little after receiving the news from them. Riso has a group that trades his products, and that group consists of several people, including Vitor Santos de Almeida, he is the leader of the gang who has just gone to prison. Because Vitor was in prison, so, Alex Santos e Silva took his place until Vitor got out of prison. They ended up running a business together. In that group there were also Adriano Silva Nunes, Danilo Rocha de Carvalho, Jarbas Cristiano Chaves de Souza, and his brother, Wisley Chaves. All of these men have been involved in MURDER, robbery, theft and trafficking. On November 19 in 2010, the group carried out a robbery at a shop and their actions were recorded by CCTV cameras. But, only one person from the group did not participate, he is Alex Santos e Silva. 
The group is led by Vitor. He used a gun to hold the shop owner at gunpoint. After they got what they wanted from the shop, they finally returned home and they found Alex accompanied by two women, they are Janaina and Gabriella. There they informed Alex that Janaina had joined a CARTEL group in another area where the CARTEL was led by Alan. And the CARTEL group led by Alan is their big enemy, and they think that Janaina was sent by Alan to be their spy. Vitor asked Janaina to show him where the weapons and products Alan was hiding were. Janaina said an address which turned out to be after Vitor contacted someone to check the place, it was just an empty warehouse. So, Vitor and Alex thought that Janaina was trapping them that day. Starting that day, Vitor and Alex tied Janaina and Gabriella as their hostages. Gabriella called her parents at 7 p.m. and she wanted to tell them where she was. But before she could say anything clearly, a man's voice took her cell phone and said that if she went home to her parents, he would beat her. After the man hung up on her, Gabriella and Janaina received all kinds of abuse from the group. They pulled Gabriella and Janaina's hair with their bare hands, and also cut parts of their SKIN with knives. Janaina saw Gabriella being brutally TORTURED. Janaina then says that her father is a military policeman, and he will soon come to save them. And he could also stop arms sales to CARTEL gangs. At 9 p.m., Vitor and Alex called Janaina's father and they asked for a ransom of $50,000. They also asked Janaina's father to prepare two firearms. That night, Janaina's father said that he didn't have that much money. So, Vitor told him to prepare just $200 for his daughter's funeral expenses. After Vitor said that, he immediately hung up the phone. That night, Vitor also called Gabriella's parents and told them to prepare the ransom money. On the telephone line, Gabriella screamed and told her grandparents and parents to find the ransom money. Gabriella also said that her forehead was injured. Vitor wants revenge on Janaina's father, because he is a police officer. Vitor and Alex will do something that will let the police know that they are in charge of the area. In fact, Janaina and Gabriella have no ties to any CARTEL. They just want to spend their free time in the area to get to know the outside world. The two teenagers had mistakenly entered the CARTEL environment. They also had no intention of being spies there. That night, Vitor took a large knife and sharpened it in front of them. Janaina and Gabriella knew what would happen to them. Vitor then SLASHED the necks of the two teenagers while they were still alive. Red liquid gushed from their NECKS and pooled on the floor of the house. Vitor SLASHED until their heads were SEPARATED. After the two victims died, they decided to dump their bodies in a place called San Martin Avenue. There is the territory of their rivals CARTEL. There, they placed the bodies of the two teenagers so that the police would think that it was the CARTEL in that area who carried out the MURDERS of the two victims. At 10 p.m., there was a black car driving down San Martin Avenue, precisely in front of a bar. The car suddenly stopped. One person from inside the car got out, and he opened the trunk, then threw two black plastic bags on the side of the road. After the two black plastics were lying there, he then threw two small plastics. Not having time to close the trunk, he immediately fired several shots to get the attention of the people there. He immediately got into the car and drove the car, which had no plates, at high speed. People in the area had no idea what the man was doing, until they checked the items thrown on the side of the road. They approached the plastic lying there. And after they opened the bag, it turned out there was a H-E-A-D-L-E-S-S body. It turned out that the small ball-like piece of plastic was the victim's H-E-A-D. Everyone there was shocked by the discovery of the bodies of the two teenagers. Janaina's uncle recognized his nephew. The police who came to the scene immediately found out where the perpetrator had contacted the victim's family. The police finally found the location where the perpetrator executed the victim. There, the perpetrators had fled and it turned out that the car used by the perpetrators to dump the victim was a stolen car. According to the autopsy results, the two victims were alive when their heads were SEPARATED, and there were several sharp object WOUNDS in the area of their heads. The police quickly found out and traced the perpetrators. Adriano escaped to a remote beach, and there he was enjoying a cigarette while sitting relaxed on the beach. Adriano tried to escape by swimming into the sea, but in the end he was caught by the police. 
On December 3, 2010, the police managed to arrest Jarbas and Wisley. Vitor finally died in a shootout with the police that occurred on December 10, 2010. On December 15, 2010, Danilo was caught because his brother reported him to the police. Meanwhile, Alex was caught 15 days after the incident, and Riso was caught in January 2011. Riso told the police that he was not involved in the deaths of the two victims. He said that he was only accompanying them while they lived at his house. However, in 2011, Riso was found dead in with gunshot WOUNDS all over his body. It is suspected that Riso was executed by rival CARTELS in the area. So, what do you think? Write your comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next case.